Hi everybody, this is Julissa. Thank you so much everyone for coming back to my channel. Thank you so much for everybody who's listening in the podcast. Today is Saturday, June 15, 2024. I'm here to make this video about another pastor who has come out and confessed of um, moral failure, I guess you can say. Pastor um, Robert Morris, a very well-known pastor, I have seen him on TV many times. He's the founding pastor of Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas. Listen to this. This church gets 100,000 worshipers weekly. 100,000 people weekly. This is why, guys, you can never go based on um, of church attendance, right? Meaning, like, you can never say that church is so blessed because look how many people go there. There are things that are being done in secret that we don't know nothing about. Okay, 2024, we have said this many times, is the year of exposure. Last week, not even a week ago, uh, Tony Evans came out and said that he's stepping away from ministry due to sin. To me, I don't know if I said it on that video that I make. To me, it meant like, let me raise my hand and walk away before all the evidence comes out. That's exactly what I felt in my spirit when I learned about Tony Evans, because the way he said, you know, he spoke to his children, he spoke to his wife. I was like, it's, it, it means to me like there's either a case that's coming up to the surface very quickly, and he's just basically saying, I'm going to walk away. This man has been on ministry for many years. Same thing with Pastor Robert Morris, who now, after an accusation, has come out this week also. He now confesses. This is another example, guys, that you cannot play with the Lord. I mean, Jesus is coming back. You think he's just going to let people just play along the Christian lingo? That's a lot of people do. They play along with the Christian lingo, having hate in their heart, conniving behind people, making assumptions, uh, making other people joining together to hate on somebody. And you think God is just going to let that be? He's going to expose everything. And this pastor was accused by a woman who said that she was molested by him starting at the age of 12 and by i gotta do a parenthesis here and say if you have you have been to some type of drama in the past this is probably not a video for you to watch because i'm gonna read an article and you know i think it goes in some details not a lot you know um i just want to say my it might trigger something on anybody who had gone through trauma there's a lot of people in the pulpit guys that are playing with fire even so, play with fire, their pride does not get them a way to go like this to other church members and saying that person this, that person the other, while they go behind closed doors and sin, and they think that God is going to be mocked and God is not going to expose that. God have mercy. Like, it's all coming out. I have said many times, many videos I have done lately, we need to get right with the Lord, get into holiness. This is not the time to be playing with fire. God is going to expose it. Every sin that you do, what you have in your heart, the reason why you do the things you do, the way you speak about somebody, the way you want to put somebody down instead of giving a compliment. You know when you feel like, man, that person looks really good today, but because you have so much hate in your heart, you rather put them down and say something awful about them instead of saying what you what God probably revealed to you about that person, something probably beautiful. Instead of saying that, your hate takes over and you want to put that person down. And people think they're just going to play along with the church lingo and play along holding hands, holding the Bible, and God is not going to expose their heart. It's all coming down. This is, I mean, it's June. It's month six of this year that we have called the year of exposure because it began in December, the biggest shocking um, allegations about T.D. Jakes, right? Now, then we have the apology from Benny Hinn. These are mega church pastors that have massive ministry. Can you imagine attending a church that gets 100,000 follow, like people are in attendance weekly? Uh, do you know the influence this is? 
And you think you're going to do stuff behind closed doors and God is not going to call you out. Like, you're really like, when I read the word of God, like, you guys know I do the reels and things like that. Like, that is so sacred to me. Like, even the pronunciation and the editing that goes behind making sure I'm putting the right words. Because to me, the Bible is so sacred. But there are people who just playing with fire. They get in this church outfit every Sunday. They get it. They, they hold the Bible. They get into this image because they are. They think to themselves, you know, I have a hundred thousand followers that come to this church to see me. I gotta play the game, and they think it's gonna go on and on and go on for years and years. And God is not gonna expose that. God have mercy. People are playing with fire. Let me read to you briefly. Robert Morris, like I said, founding pastor of Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas, which attracts 100,000 worshipers weekly, has confessed to inappropriate sexual behavior with a young lady more than 35 years ago. Watch. He was a young pastor after a woman accused him sexually of abusing her multiple years beginning when she was 12 and ongoing thing starting when she was just 12 years old. 12 years old. She says, when I was in my early 20s, I was involved in inappropriate behavior with the young lady that, this is what he says, excuse me, uh, with the young lady in my home where I was staying. Uh, it was kissing and I don't know, he's just, he went on detail, I guess. This behavior, he says, happened on several occasions over the next few years. He said in a statement, the Christian post and as Gabriel Church about the allegation in March of 1987, the situation was brought to light and he was confessed and repented of. I submitted myself to the elders of the Shady Grove Church and to the young lady's father. They asked me to step out of ministry and receive counseling and freedom, which I did. He says, since that time I have walked in purity and accountability in this area. This is what he's saying. He explained that he had returned to ministry in 1989, two years after his abuse was exposed with the blessing of the survivor's father and the elders of the church. He further noted that he and his wife met with the survivor and her family in October of 1989. So it seems to me this happened years ago. I asked for their forgiveness and they graciously forgave me. This is what he's saying. The accuser, her name is Cindy, she said that everything began back in December 25th, 1982 and continue on for four and a half years. And let me see. She said, I was 12 years old. I was a little girl. So here's the thing. I know people are going to say, yeah, all this happened years ago, like 40 years ago. Like when people are abused as a child, guys, it could take so long for them to even realize that was abuse. Okay, that's why people complain, you know, the victims of Bill Cosby or like all these people, you know, Harvey Weinstein, they're like, that happened 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Like, it's, it's a lot of the times, they don't even know it's abuse, especially at the age of 12. They don't even know what's happening. This is the man that everybody said, you know, do what he says. He is the pastor. He's the youth pastor. Everybody's going to be like, you know, your parents admire him so much. And they're always dropping me off with him to do activities. It could take years and people could take, like, if they even recover from that, right? They might not even recover. And then it affects it. It becomes like a, a, an affecting thing that, it affects their life and their relationship later on in life. That's why, and it's all in their head and, and you know, and they have memories about it. And then 10 years pass by, 30 years pass by, and then they remember things. And they're like, that is the man who did that to me, who did the damage, you know? And that's why he's saying, you know, it happened in 1982, it began, it lasted for four years. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, this and the other. The thing is, when when cases like this happen is that it needs to be spoken about and before they hand over ministry to all this pastor something must be investigated before okay um i do apologize i do have to cut the, this video short because of um uh, i have a, an issue with the memory uh here but i will come back and finish it thank you so much everybody for coming back to my channel
Thank you so much, everybody, for coming back. I do apologize about that break here, but continue on with the story of Pastor Robert Morris. Um, he, this is what was crazy about this case, because I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, that happened years ago, this and that. Um, if people don't get delivered from being a, a predator, like they're going to become repeat offenders. And that is why, you know, it's so crazy. What I was saying before, I think there should be more investigating, more moral values um, research, I guess you can say on a person before you hand out ministry. Okay. And um, there's, you know, like people use flattery charm to, because now, you know, they, people like a lot of these pastors, they have to have an image, right? They have to be charming. They have to get to um, know how to speak to people and all of that. And it's almost like, um, it's, it's almost like a business type of type of ordeal. Let me see more information here. Um, he said, so he confessed that that's what he did. And he basically told the story, the whole story. Um, she said, her name is Cindy. And she said, um, everything began in December 25th, 1982. And she said, I was 12 years old. I was a little girl, a very innocent little girl. And he was brought into our home, he and his wife, Debbie, and their little boy, Josh, and he trusted and preached at the church that my dad helped start. And then began grooming all of us to do this, which took me decades to wrap my brain around as an adult, she said, and that's what I was saying before, guys. It could take years um, for people to realize that was abuse. You know, that's why all these confessions that you hear from, like, um, very famous, you know, people that, that have abusers, and they're like, wait, that happened. Why? You know, people always want to accuse um, the victim and say, why are you coming out now 25 years after? It, it's a, such a dramatic event for a grown person to abuse a child. I don't want to get graphic here. Like, they don't even realize until they're old enough to know what that is and kind of comprehend what happened to them. And then, you know, they, they, you know, they, grow, they go on with life, and they're like, wait, how come I'm different compared to everybody else around me, right? And they start putting two and two together, and then they remember things. And they're like, oh, man, this man basically destroyed my life when I was growing up, right? And then once they get to that point, they're, they're like, this is the reason why things in my life are ha happening the way they are. Then they want to, you know, do something about it because it's almost like the, the bandage is removed from their eyes, because they're innocent back then it was so you know they're a child they don't know what's happening right this likable man brought into the home like here in this case he was working at the that the the church that her dad built and the whole family you know was welcome into their home and behind closed doors that's what he was doing to to her that's crazy guys okay let me continue to read here. She said, I went on for many years. He's, he went on for many years. He he says there was no uh, intercourse, but he did, uh, he did touch me. I don't want to, you know, give you explicit details. It's very explicit. This whole interview that they have done with her um, is very um, in detail. She says here, um, Morris began preaching at her church regularly on Sunday after he was invited to do a youth revival in her hometown. Her family and Morris says quickly became friends and they were invited to go into trips and things like that. I always say this, you know, check on your kids. I think people, because of convenience, right? Oh, don't worry, you can leave them here. I'll take care of them. I don't like, because of convenient guys, people will tell you what you wanna hear. There are people who are struggling with a lot of stuff. There's a lot of people who are struggling with things that have not they have not overcome from childhood. You know, it could also be a chain reaction from also being abused when they were younger. And these are the people who always want to be with your kids. I'm not saying everybody is like that. Obviously, not everybody is like that. Not everybody has that in them. But don't get so quick to you know, show up on an house one day. You leave your kids with your neighbor. You leave your kids with this family friend that everybody knows, everybody loves. Don't say, I'll be there in five minutes. Like, show up on an house one day. See what's up. 
is they're they're your children. You are you are supposed to be protecting them, okay? Because so convenient convenience. What I was saying is that everybody's like, well, you know, they're so nice. They pick them up from school. They drop them off, and you know, I don't have to do anything. I can just go to work. You know, remember that young girl, Madeline Soto, right? It's just crazy what happened to her. So many years of abuse. And the mom, you know, behind that man covering for him and all of that, that's crazy. It's happening. It's happening right now to a lot of families as we speak. And it's just crazy. You know, there's a lot of children who are suffering right now. Um, let me see. Let me see what else I can get to you guys from this article. When she turned 16, um, he will take her out in her car and try to have more sexual um stuff with her wow so imagine like it was from 12 years old all the way to that age this man was so persistent with this young girl that's another thing like, i'm sorry but that's another thing let's just you know let's just have let's just say you have a child and then you have um this adult friend of yours who is just obsessed with your child like come on like, come on, you got to pay more attention. There's no way that this is not even like a family member. And they're, you know, they might, you have to look out for what they say. Okay, pay attention. They should, an adult person should never be commenting, oh man, when she grows up, she's going to have that body. Like, don't be, like, that's just so inappropriate. And that should be a red flag for any parent. You shouldn't have this adult friend being so obsessed with your young kid that's not normal okay i don't care if they're like you know um if they're like good and like you know you know them for years all of that you know like you have to i don't know how to explain it because like i said people will tell you what you want to hear you have to like do a lot of put attention to what they're saying right if they're commenting about you know their you know, what they look like and things like that, um, what they're going to look when they get older. Like, that's not normal. That's very inappropriate. And even buying them stuff, you know, like that's just a little too much. And that's something that you should pay attention to. It's inappropriate because that's called grooming, right? There is no need for your adult friend to be buying. Like, one thing is to buy a birthday gift. That's different, guys. You guys know I'm not referring to that, but... When there is an ongoing, like, you know, I went to the store the other day and I thought, you know, this dress will be look great on your daughter. Okay. And then two weeks from that, it's like, I went to this, I went on my kitchen. I thought that would look great. And I bought it for her. Like, how many gifts are you going to receive from this crazy adult friend that you have regarding your daughter? Or the, or, or <laughs> all the gifts that are coming out are for your daughter even though you have other kids that's not normal pay attention to that okay um and let me see what says here in 2005 she filed a civil lawsuit but Morris attorney suggested she that she caused the abuse on herself because she was very flirtatious she says that's something else that's so not right to accuse the victim in this case and they say she asked for fifty thousand dollars to cost it to cover the cost of her counseling and stemming from her abuse. She said they offered her twenty five k if she signed a non disclosure agreement, but she refused. For years, she said she has been warning churches and pastors who will listen to her story about Morris because she doesn't believe she's the only one who suffered his abuse. That's the other thing. Like I said, repeat offenders. People usually leave a pattern. If they don't overcome that, if they don't seek the Lord to overcome and be free from something like that, rest assured there will be repeat offenders. And I think it's interesting that now he actually confessed to the whole thing, right? Um, like I said, you know, I, in my opinion, this pastor, to be honest, Pastor Robert Morris, 
I have seen him on TV sometimes, and I'm like, there's something off with him. I couldn't pinpoint what it was, but there's something about his demeanor that is just doesn't sit right with me. It's just it, it doesn't sit right with me. Like there's something about his the way he looks. It's almost like his his own persona is telling on him. I don't want to be judgmental. When I felt that watching him a couple of years ago, I'm like, I don't want. I don't feel like comfortable watching him. Not because he was doing any we anything weird, but there was something about him that didn't sit right with me. Something about his look. Um, but here we are, guys. You know, another pastor has confessed of um, abusing morally failure. That's what he calls it. But he abused this young girl for many years, and she is now speaking about it. And like in 2005, it was already brought up, but she's. She wants to warn people, and there's a reason why perhaps she wants to warn people, and it could be because, you know, uh, people always tell you what they're going to do, and she has spent a long time with him, you know, when she was younger. Maybe she heard some stuff. Maybe it was like, you know, how come you don't want to do it because so-and-so does it too? Like I said, it could take years for anybody to realize that that was abuse, and that's why you hear a lot of these stories coming out later, later, later in life. So let me know what you guys think, guys. It's June 15th, the year. June 15, 2024, 2024, the year we call the year of exposure. God is not playing. It's, he's going to expose it. So thank you so much, everybody, for coming back to my channel. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Have a good day. God bless.